Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about hair loss associated with level thyroxine. Level thyroxine is a very common, in fact, the most common uh, medication used to treat low thyroid function or hypothyroidism. And hair loss is a symptom that can be associated with the use of level thyroxine. It can also be associated with thyroid problems in general, too high, too low. And so it can be kind of confusing. So if you're a thyroid patient, if you have hair loss, if you're using level thyroxine, this video is gonna be very helpful for you. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in helping people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. But today is about the thyroid and more specifically about level thyroxine associated hair loss. And as I mentioned before, there are really three main ways that level thyroxine can be associated with hair loss in thyroid patients. Let's go through them right now and I'll explain to you what kind of things you should be looking at or should be doing depending on which type of pattern that you have here. Now, let me first also start by saying that it can be difficult if you have hair loss. I know that, I respect that. I treated a lot of people who have hair loss related issues. It can be difficult to find the root cause. Um, I understand that, so I understand you're probably frustrated, but I can say with some degree of confidence that by looking at three, these three steps, you'll be able to identify this, the cause of your hair loss and actually treat the problem and actually potentially fix it, unless you have some sort of genetic problem um, which is impacting your ability to grow that hair back. So let's talk about number one, and that is your dose is too high. Don't forget that hyperthyroidism can cause hair loss, just like hypothyroidism can cause hair loss, okay? Now, it is uncommon that most thyroid patients are taking too much level thyroxine. So remember, we're talking about taking level thyroxine here. It is possible that if your dose of level thyroxine is too high, that will cause hair loss, okay? Again, it's not that common, but it does happen. How do you know if it's occurring in you? You need to look at your thyroid lab test and you need to look at the other symptoms you may be happy or may be experiencing. So if you have, if it is your dose that is actually too high, you will see a drop in your TSH, usually to a suppressed level. A low TSH generally does not result in hair loss. Although it can, it's uncommon. Most people who experience this issue have a suppressed TSH. A suppressed TSH means that your TSH is un. Um, recognizable, like the, the number is so low that it cannot be quantified. So usually that's represented as a less than sign, 0 0.005 or 0 0.05, depends on what type of lab you're using, but something like that. So it mean, the, you'll know if you see that less than indication, that means that it's so low, it just says, hey, it's some number lower than this, we don't know how low, but it's somewhere in that range. In addition, you may start to exp see on your lab test an increase in free T3 levels and free T4 levels, one or the other, usually not both. both. In my experience, it tends to be a low TSH and an increase in free T4. In addition, and this must also occur with all of these things, you must be experiencing the other symptoms of hyperthyroidism. That may include things like heart palpitations, a racing heart, um, the hair loss we talked about, diarrhea, um, shaking of the hands, your hands might be shaking kind of like that, um, and so on. Almost always, if your dose is too high, you will experience all three of these things, the decrease in the TSH, the high free T3 or free T4, and the additional thyroid symptoms I just mentioned. If you are not experiencing those issues, it is most not like, or your hair loss is most likely not related to your dose being too high, okay? So that's number one. Number two is that, and this is far more common by the way, your dose is simply too low. I've lost count of the number of thyroid patients that come to me, they tell me their thyroid medication didn't work, they say, I tried Armour Thyroid, I tried Level Thyroxine, I tried Synthroid, I tried Tyrosint, I tried it all, and it doesn't work. You cannot say that your medication doesn't work unless you know that your dose is sufficient. And most thyroid patients who are listening to this, that includes you, you're being underdosed right now whether you realize it or not. Doctors would prefer to give you less than too much. They almost, they almost always err on the side of too, too, too little or too few when giving anyone medications in general, including thyroid hormone. And the reason is simple. If they give your dose too small, the risk of side effects related to that medication are fewer, right? There's, there's not as many. So they almost always err on, the err on the side of giving you too little as opposed to too much. If you, you'll know that if you fit this category because the exact opposite is true here. Your TSH will be high. The range that I want you to look for is usually less than um, 2.0 to 2.5, okay? You should have a TSH less than 2.0 to 2.5. If you are taking level thyroxine, um, like we're talking about here, if you're taking level thyroxine and your TSH is like a three um, or a 2.7 or a four or 4.8, whatever, anything um, higher than the 2.0 to 2.5, that's a problem that you are, that's an indication that you are one of those thyroid patients who is not receiving enough thyroid medication or enough level of thyroxine. Therefore, your hair loss may be associated with your dose being too low. That is also, we can also look at your free T3 and free T4 levels. So remember, 
We looked at your T4 and T3 levels if, to see if your dose was too high. We can also look at them to see if it's too low. In this case, it's actually pretty straightforward. The TSH has flipped, remember? If, you're, if your thyroid is too low, TSH goes up. If your thyroid is too high, TSH goes down. That exact opposite is true with your T3 and T4 levels. So if you have a low T3 or a low T4 level, that means that you don't have enough in your body and your dose is probably too low as well. In addition, and this is, this is part of the course for most, for most um, thyroid patients, you must be experiencing hypo or low thyroid symptoms. That includes things like weight gain, the hair loss we talked about, constipation, um, cold intolerance, um, uh, menstrual irregularities, depression, things like that. So you'll almost always experience those symptoms, plus you'll find that on your labs, you'll see a low T3 and a low T4, plus you'll see that your TSH is not optimized and is higher than this 2.0 to 2.5 range, okay? So these are all indications that your dose of level thyroxine is too low. And if you can increase that dose, you'll normalize thyroid function and that will help your hair grow. Okay, so that's how, that's what, that's how this is all working here. And likewise, if your dose is too high, if you lower that dose of level thyroxine, you'll get out of that hyperthyroid range and that will allow your hair to grow as well. Okay, that's number one and number two. Number three is a little more tricky and one that's probably gonna be frustrating when I say it to you if you don't already know. And that is that level thyroxine itself can cause hair loss independent of whatever dose you're taking. So just if you took a little bit of level thyroxine, say a dose of five to 10 micrograms, which is tiny by the way, not enough to really impact your TSH in any measurable way. Just taking a small amount of level thyroxine is enough to cause hair loss all by itself. Now here's something that's also a little frustrating as I said, that may be frustrating as you hear it. This is true of all thyroid medications, okay? Every single one of them, I've seen hair loss directly related to the medication and not related to the dose. So what do you do? It actually doesn't have to be a cause for concern. It just means you have to switch medications. Now, first, this is why I put this one number three. You want to look at whether or not your dose is optimized as too high or too low before you go to number three, because number three will require that you change your medicine, okay? You change your thyroid medication because if it's related to the level thyroxine, it may be associated with level thyroxine, but not with Synthroid. And if it is, is associated with Synthroid, then you might want to switch to level thyroxine or better yet, switch to tyrosine. Okay, or better yet, switch to natural desiccated thyroid options um, like Armour Thyroid. Some of them are um, not available due to recalls and so on, but you get the idea. You can switch from any type of thyroid medication to any other, all right? That's the idea that I want to get in your head here. All you need to do is change your medication and monitor. I have always found some form of thyroid medication that works for every single patient. It may take a lot of time. In fact, I've gone through, not personally, but I've had patients who go through five, six different types of thyroid medication and finally land on the one that works for them. And it's not a popular, necessarily a popular brand of thyroid medication, but if it works for them and it works for you, that's all that matters, okay? So don't be afraid to swap up your medication. The reason I mentioned level thyroxine, synthroid, and tyrosine um, is, are because, well, is because that those medications are most common. And so if you are taking one of those, your doctor's most likely to switch you to another one just, just because um, they're more comfortable with those medicines. But better yet, you might do better on a combo of T4, or T3, including things like natural desiccated thyroid or compounded T4, T3, or sustained release T3, and so on. If this is all sounding like Greek to you, I have tons of videos which explain the difference in thyroid medications. Um, so I would recommend that you look at those because there are lots of options available to you as a thyroid patient. But this wraps up the three primary causes um, of hair loss associated with level thyroxine in thyroid patients. Remember, don't let it get you down. There is almost always a solution, but it might require some digging on your part. If you have any questions about your situation, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to check those out and answer them. I don't get to all questions, but I try to. I at least try to read every single one. Um, so leave, it, leave that comment below and I'll try to do my best to get to it. If you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information, all designed to help thyroid patients like this. So if you found this useful, you'll find that information useful as well. And you can get that in the link in the description below. Otherwise, um, that's all I have for you guys and I will see you in the next one.